I'm Insomniac and this is the Timex Waterberry Traditional GMT. Okay, well first of all, let's get the most exciting part of this video out of the way first. Somebody watching this video is going to get this watch for free. That's right, I'm giving away this brand new Waterberry GMT. All you have to do is click a few buttons and leave a comment. Subscribe to the channel, like the video, and leave a comment down below, and follow me on one of any of my social media accounts. The links to those are in my video description. That's all you have to do. Once we hit 3,000 subscribers, I'm going to pick somebody from the comments down below. I will pin your comment and reply and let you know that you won. Two small side notes. Number one, yes, I do ship internationally, so if you don't live in the United States, you can enter too. And number two, once I pick a comment, I absolutely am going to check to see if you're subscribed to the channel and are following me on one of my social media accounts, so uh, please don't skip those steps. So yeah, like I said, one of you is going to get this watch. Good luck. Okay, let's dive into the Timex Waterberry Traditional GMT. Starting on a good note here with the case, let's talk dimensions first. 39 millimeter diameter with a short lug to lug length of 47 millimeters and a slim case height of only 11 and a half millimeters. It's one of those sweet spot cases where it's large enough to have good presence on a fairly large wrist, yet small enough to not look ridiculous on a small wrist. So I'm very happy with that. Next up, let's talk Timex's choice here for mixed colors. When I first saw this watch online, I wasn't sure if I'd like the fact that the case is a mix of gold tone and steel. But in person, I understood what Timex was going for. With only the bezel edge, crown, and GMT button in gold tone, along with the rings around the hour markers, which we'll get to later, uh, what you have is a subtle and classy splash of accent color here. Just enough so that it adds some interesting contrast to the case, but without looking like some overdone fake gold watch. And both the steel and gold tones work well with the blue dial, and blue and red bezel, so really cool choice on Timex's part. Case shape is fairly standard but handsome, and all of the steel parts of the main body are done in a subtle brush pattern, with the exception of the polished case back, which I have to address for a second. It's a snap-on case back, yet Timex claims this watch has 100 meters of water resistance. I'm not saying that it's impossible, and I'm sure nobody's gonna take this piece on a 100 meter dive, but let me just say that I have my doubts about that water resistance rating. Anyway, the case back has the Timex logo in the center and various information about the watch engraved around the outer edge. The crown on this watch is done in a gold tone. It's a perfect size for this case and it has good grip to it, yet its thin profile doesn't add much size to the overall case at all in terms of span across the wrist. And the pusher for the GMT up by the two o'clock position is also done in gold tone and has a quality feel to it when you push the button to adjust the GMT hand. Last but not least, we have the unidirectional bezel which is the only moderately disappointing part of this case. Aesthetically, it's excellent. The insert looks great, the angle of the bezel is nice, and the presentation overall looks great on this watch. But the bezel action is pretty poor. It feels cheap when you turn it, and there is a lot of play in the bezel. Look at this. A lot of play in the bezel, regardless of where you set it. Although, as I stated earlier, I doubt anybody is going to take this watch on dives or use the rotating bezel for anything other than something to occasionally fiddle with, so it's not such a big deal on this piece. At least it looks the part. The dial on the Waterberry GMT is beautiful. Starting with the base of the dial, you have a linear brushed dark blue surface that really has a beautiful and elegant look to it. Around the outer edge of the dial, you have a small printed minted track with larger lines at every five minute interval, and this track is separated from the main dial by a thin white borderline. The hour markers are clean, white loom filled circles with triangles at the quarters, all of them surrounded by a nice polished gold tone ring. In place of the three o'clock index, you have a date window, white numeral on a black disc, which was the right choice for blending in with the dark blue dial as opposed to the standard black numeral on a white disc. And take a look at the shape of the date window. 
Here's something that you almost never see, but you can really appreciate here. It's not actually square like on most watches. It's wider at the outer edge and angles inward toward the center of the dial to add a bit of balance and continuity with the triangular markers at 12, 6, and 9. And that's not all. Timex really put a lot of thought into the date window, more so than just about any other brand I've come across. Look closer and you'll see that it isn't just the cutout for the date window that's angled. The numerals on the date disc are also angled so that the inner numerals are actually smaller than the outer numerals. And look even closer at the zero here, and you'll notice that even the numeral itself is angled, so it fits just right inside this unique angled window. That's great attention to detail. Under the 12 o'clock index, you have what appears to be the thinnest applied text ever that reads Timex. Then above the 6 o'clock index, you have the Waterbury logo and text that reads the Waterbury GMT. Last but not least, we have the hands. And let me tell you, this is a great set of hands. Your hour and minute hands are fairly wide, loom-filled hands bordered with brushed gold tone, while your second hand is actually green, a fun yet subtle touch to differentiate the second hand, and that hand uses a cool Waterbury logo as the counterbalance. And of course you have your GMT hand, which as per usual with a lot of GMT hands is done in a sporty color, red in this case, with loom filling in the triangular head with a really fine elongated point at the end. All of the hands are a perfect length for this dial, and with the exception of the second hand, which some might argue is the least important hand on the dial anyway, all of the hands have excellent contrast against the dark blue backdrop. The entire dial has a super clean and simple look while mixing class and fun splashes of color for you to enjoy looking at anytime you look down at your wrist. You have two usable complications on the Waterbury GMT, the date at 3 o'clock and of course, a GMT function. The date window is large and legible, and as I laid out for you in the dial section, very well thought out. And the GMT function is great. First of all, adjusting this second time zone is as simple as pushing this button up here at the 2 o'clock position. That's all you do. Second, the hand is large and contrasts perfectly against the dark blue dial, and the tip of the hand reaches out past the minute track. So both of these complications are not only usable, but easy to use and useful daily functions. The Waterbury GMT has loom filled hour markers and loom in all of the hands minus the second hand. I'd classify the loom on this piece as average. All of the loom glows evenly and picks up a charge fairly easily, but as you can see here, the hands glow brighter than the hour markers, and the loom doesn't really last very long, especially on the hour markers. So it's there, and it basically works, but it's not the most impressive loom you'll come across. Time at a glance on this watch is excellent. As I discussed in the dial section, the hands, markers, and printing all contrast perfectly against the dark blue dial, and even though the minute track is small, the minute hand and GMT hand reach all the way out to that small minute track, and every hand on this dial has a fine point to it. So all of that mixed with the uncluttered layout of this dial equals a quick and simple read of the time anytime you look at the watch. There isn't much that needs to be said about the accuracy of this piece. It's a Timex and it's a quartz movement. It has been perfectly accurate to the minute for the time that I've had it here, and I assume that that's the way it'll always be in between battery changes. And the look of the movement is excellent. One thing you hear me criticize a lot on this channel when it comes to quartz movements is lazy, sloppy, springy, deadbeat second hands that miss their marks on the minute track. This one has a crisp look to each stop and hits the mark on almost all of the indexes around the dial. The strap on this watch is a mixed bag of excellent and just average. Let's start with all of the good stuff. First of all, it's brown. I'm no fashion expert, but I always see black straps on these Pepsi-style GMT watches for some reason. Brown is a better choice to match this deep shade of blue on the dial, and looks great with the gold accents, so another solid choice there by Timex. It's also a handsome looking strap, with a subtle textured pattern and simple stitching. The strap length is excellent and would fit just about any size wrist, and the free loops hold the excess strap in place throughout the day without having to fiddle with them every 10 minutes. The buckle is fairly standard, with the Timex text engraved into it, although I'm not sure why they went with a polished buckle, being the only polished element on the main body is the case back, but no big deal. It's also worth mentioning that Timex uses a strap here with quick releases, so you don't need a spring bar tool to take off the strap, which is great. The bit of average comes in with the feel of the strap. I haven't had it here long enough to tell you whether or not it's going to be durable in the long term, but it feels really thin and borderline cheap, but it looks great on this piece, and thanks to the quick releases Timex put on the strap, if you don't like it, 
it would take all of three seconds to take it off and replace it. Last but not least, we have value. As of the time of this video, this is a brand new model from Timex. So the same price that it's listed for on the Timex site is the same price that I found it for everywhere else online, which is $189. Although I suspect that in time it will be cheaper on some of the larger retail sites. But even at $189, you're getting a handsome, reliable GMT from a well-known brand with great dimensions and great little details and charm. In my opinion, if you're looking for a good-looking GMT watch on a budget, this is a great value. And remember, for one of you watching this video, you're literally going to get this watch for free, which is an even better value. So again, make sure that you subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, leave a quick comment down below, and follow me on one of my social media accounts. Those links are down in the video description. When we hit 3,000 subscribers, I am going to pick a comment from below, pin it to the top, and reply to let you know that you won the brand new Rolex Waterbury traditional GMT. Yeah, that's it. Good luck, and I'll see you all at the next watch review. Thank you.